10 concordant pairs and one discordant pair. All right, so the number of rankings that are larger than the number 2 that are underneath the number 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 concordant pairs. And the number 1 is smaller than the ranking of, of 2, so that's a discordant pair. Now if we go through the whole list, we will find these values for concordant pairs. Let me just choose uh, this one here, ranking of 7. So how many values are larger than the number of 7? And underneath the number 7? 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 4 concordant pairs. And how many are smaller than 7? There aren't any that are smaller than 7 and underneath 7. So that gets a 0. That's how you calculate concordant and discordant pairs. You don't have to do it for the last one because there are no values underneath it. The next step is to simply sum these concordant pairs. The values, so 10, 10, 20, 36, so 10 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 6 plus 6, 4 and 4 and 2 and 2 and 0. And what do you get? You get a sum of 6 concordant pairs, 60 concordant pairs. If you sum all these values in the column, and you sum all these values in this column, you get 60 minus 6 discordant pairs divided by 60 plus 6, and then you get 54 divided by 66 based on the Kendall style formula, and then you get a value of 0.818. And this is the Kendall's tau coefficient. It's like a Spearman rank correlation, but it's different. So a larger value suggests larger uh, values and rankings seem to correspond with larger values and rankings in the master as well as the student. So there is a correspondence, there's a linear association between the rankings. How do you test it for statistical significance? You can use the Z table. And how you calculate the uh, Z value is multiply 3 by the tau value by the square root of n, n minus 1, uh, divided by the square root of 2 times 2, n plus 5. I, I don't know if there's any meaning to any of this formula, but you just have to go through the calculations. And when you plug in the numbers, because the sample size is 12, there's 12 um, paintings or observations uh, in terms of what they were rating or ranking. Uh, and then you just go through the motions and you calculate a Z value of 3.7019. And you can calculate uh, a specific P value on that if you wanted to, if you had a, a Z to P calculator. But as long as you know that Z, any value greater than 1.96 is going to be statistically significant against the Z table with alpha set at 0.05 it's always going to be 1.96. So as it's larger, it's statistically significant. So there's a statistically significant association in the first example with a uh, Kendall, Kendall's tau coefficient of 0.818. Now here's another example. And I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, but the what main thing I want to show here is that there's a lot of uh, exact perfect rank correspondence here. The only difference is in the major is in the extreme. So in the rank of 1, the master rated this one. The second student actually ranked that as the worst painting. And for the worst painting that the master identified, the student actually ranked it a the best painting. But in everything else, they actually had perfect correspondence. Now this is a great question of, well, what do you think the Kendall's Tau is going to be? Is it going to be larger or smaller than the first student? Actually, I forgot to write. That should be student 2 here instead of student one. But the question remains of what do you think will be the actual difference? Now I've calculated the concordant and discordant pairs. So for the number 12, how many values underneath it are larger than 12? There aren't any. So that's zero concordant pairs. And how many values are discordant? That is, le that are less than the value of 12 and underneath 12? All of them. So it's 11. Okay, and you do that for the whole series. That's how you calculate the concordant and discordant pairs. So the number 2, how many values are larger than 2 and underneath 2? Well, there's 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and not... I was going to go 10, but this one actually isn't. 1 is smaller than 2, so that's a discordant pair. And I've calculated for all of them. And what do we get when we go through the motions of the formulas and calculating the sum of the concordant pairs equals 45 and the sum of the discordant pairs equals 21? 
this is what it comes out to. We get a value of 0.364, which actually isn't statistically significant. So isn't that interesting? There's actually perfect correspondence amongst a large number of the rankings on a percentage basis, but they've got two really big differences. And so Kendall's tau didn't quite end up being statistically significant. It's still a decent correlation, though. 0.36 is a, is a decent correspondence, but it's much less than the 0.818 in the student who didn't have any perfect correspondences in the rankings in terms of uh, one ranking against the other. Uh, and that's not statistically significant, but it almost is. Now, one question that comes to mind is, well, what's the difference between Spearman's row or Spearman's rank correlation versus Kendall's tau? And I think that's a very good question. And I can tell you there can be meaningful differences. And I'm going to create another video where I compare and contrast those. And I encourage you to check that video out if you want to understand those differences. And if you don't want to understand it, well, I hope you found this video insightful in terms of how to calculate Kendall's tau and how to uh, interpret it. And when you get different uh, values and, and the differences between Concord and pairs and perfect correspondence and rankings. Anyway, I hope we'll catch you next time.